And so welcome to how to use your deck profile, Musketeer Runic, deck rating. So in this video, I'm just going to talk more about the deck. Talk about its strengths and weaknesses. And talk about why I consider its rating to be C+, and why it's not why it's not higher and how you could increase it to be higher with support if it is uh, if it does come in the future and other ways that i feel it could be increased okay and with that let's get on with the rest of the video okay so here are your key extra deck masters these are the masters you're going to be summoning most of the time all right you're going to be summoning essentially huggins Quite a lot, as if you've not added, uh, as if you've not added it to your hand, the field spell with tip, or, or if it's not in the draw phase, not in your hand in the starting hand, then you're gonna be using Huggins' effect. I need a hug, especially when uh, you know its effect is negated with an Ash Blossom, an Imperm, or any other hand trap. You're definitely gonna need the hug afterwards. The truth you need to know. Because that really, really hurts and makes you feel very sad. I'm getting emotional. Um, you're then going to ha you have Moon in there to add that continuous spell. Because this card can obviously search it and Tip can search it as well. This is why we play it at 2, I feel. And then we have Gary, the Runic Fangs. This is going to be the card that we're going to be using to add our field spell, you know, in our late game when it's in the graveyard or the um you know you know the runic continuous spell which it'll be runic allure now one of the things that's very interesting about this deck is your extra deck is very free i've only mentioned like you know three cards so at max you're gonna have what you can get away with just playing huggins and a uh, moonin and leave gary out of it so this means that you can really play around with this uh, Musketeer Runic's extra deck. You could add stuff such as Super Poly uh, to have Super Poly targets. You could make your version with, you know, Crossout, Designator. There is so many ways to do the extra deck for Musketeer Runics, And this is where the creativity of this deck really is going to shine for anyone who's going to play this deck because your extra deck is your oyster i believe the answer that you are looking for is yes um this really is that extra deck space is extremely free and extremely um so that's something to bear in mind the extra decks uh in musketeer runic is not really in not extra deck runic sorry in musketeer runic is not really solidified as you can put basically anything um here's where there is no right or wrong way to make your extra deck in musketeer runics as for me i don't think you know it's officially confirmed i don't say my version will be confirmed of the extra deck really so there is just no no wrong, right or wrong way to be building the musketeer runic extra deck but one thing i will say before going to the part of where i show how the combos and the playstyle of the deck is that a lot of people have mentioned why don't you play max in this deck one of the reasons is let's go let's just show a typical runic spell which is runic tip and you're gonna see why so we'll get runic spell and you can see that close there's put to summon one runic monster from your extra deck to the extra deck zone and there we have it that clause right there is on is on every runic quick play spell this is the reason why max just can't work i mean yeah you can put it in there and yes you can get the uh, pluses um it is there does it come up yeah it can but i chose not to i chose to just uh, remove uh, to remove it i mean the plusing is there but i chose to be a bit more consistent rather than just plussing for the sake of plussing this isn't this isn't like tears here where you know we go to the casino and we plus so much that we basically just clean house no no, no. this is a plus that is pretty average okay um especially considering the decks we're going to be facing um in this format you know 
if you plastering, in my opinion, especially in this format, you need a plaster like tears. You really need to clean the house and just end some lives, okay? You need to break people's souls. So yeah, that's one of the reasons why I just don't play uh, Magical Musketeer Max. But that doesn't mean that you don't have to play it. You can play it in your version. Uh, maybe it can work for you. But it's, uh, for me, a personal preference. I've decided to not play it. Okay, let's get on to the next part of this video. Right, let's talk about the side deck. So we'll have three DDD Crow. Crow is useful, um, but we side this, we don't main deck this, as we have, you know, Magical Musket Dancing Needle in the main deck. So we side this if we're facing against possibly, you know, Tears or Sprite. So this is in the side. Okay, let's move on to the next card in our side deck is going to be the three of Ghost Ogre. Um, Ghost Ogre, you know, is sided again if we really want to be dealing specifically with Sprite. Um, it's there to deal with Sprite, there to also deal with any other deck that really needs monsters, Possibly some floodgates if they come up. Usually you're not really concerned about floodgates in this deck really, but it may come up. Um, Goes and match does hurt you to a certain degree, um, but usually you have a way to destroy it with either Desperado, Runic Destruction, Lost Stand, such sort of things. But it does come up and if there are multiple floodgates, definitely Ghost Ogre can come in there in clutch and save you. Let's go on to our next um, card in our side deck, which is Droll and Lockbird. Now, Droll and Lockbird, why do I put this in the side? Um, as Yu-Gi-Oh! is... As I've been playing the game, I'm noticing more and more every single meta deck searches, and they search a lot. Droll and Lockbird, I feel... Uh, is going to is start, I feel in my opinion is going to start g is gaining importance in the same way as Ash Blossom. While Ash Blossom is good all throughout, Droll and Lockbird is starting to feel in my opinion gain relevance, and I think should definitely be put in the side deck and definitely should be considered um, going forward with how the meta is shaping up and also with just decks in general. Decks are able to do more searching than ever before, able to just add loads, lots and lots of advantage. So definitely Draw and Lockbird should not be ignored and definitely, in my opinion, should be put in the side deck. But again, it goes for your personal preference. You could put Ash in here instead. Um, this is all about personal preference that you put in your side deck. And we have here our next three of Evenly Matched. Evenly Matched is just that, you know, to break boards. Maybe we're just dealing with the deck that's just really, uh, you know, very, very strong. Has a lot of negates. I mean, yes, we do main deck um, Dark Runa no more. But maybe we just need more board breakers. Maybe it's just not enough. Remember, we're playing Musketeer Runics here. We're not playing something really strong here, so we have to consider that sometimes we're going to lose, or 90% of the time, we're going to lose that game one, and maybe game two we just want to just deal with our opponent in the most painful way possible. So, pretty much, yeah. Definitely comes up. So, evenly matched at three is pretty good. Yeah. And finally, our last card in our side deck is the three of Ghost Mourner Moonlit Chill. Um, this card will come up um, now because of obviously time rules. But I remember when I saw this card, you know, in the beginning of 2020 coming out in, you know, Eternity Code in that booster set. I have always had an eye on this card. I have felt that this card is extremely good. 
um, an uh, effect veiler that can be activated in any t any turn. Very flexible, very has all the makings of a special and wonderful hand trap here. So I've definitely had my eyes on it and I picked it up straight away. And we can see its uses now, especially with the new time rules. Um, it's really, really good. I feel this card is good against tears specifically because they do go into the extra deck and they summon uh, big ass monsters, which you're going to, if they leave the field, essentially they're going to um, deal burn damage, which will gonna help you in time. This can also work against Sprite as well, or just against any deck in general, as we are in the, as links are a thing, synchros are a thing, and everything is a thing. So you are gonna get that sweet, sweet, uh, burn damage. Now, my opinion, obviously, playing Ghost, you know, none, maybe it might be useful, but the thing is, your opponent, um, yeah, you can gain life points, but I feel like you want to assure yourself that you can win in time, and I feel Ghost Mona is the one, because it forces them to, to stop this card, especially when uh, time is cold. And that's about it. But before I end the before I end this video, uh, you know, part of this video for you know the deck rating, I just want to mention one thing. Your key weakness and ultimate weakness in Musketeer Runix is Lancia, because every single Musk Runic quick play spell states this: after resolution, banish a card from the top. Of the opponent's deck. This means that if Lancia is played, you cannot resolve any of your runic spells or traps. Such is how life works. So if a Lancia is dropped, you are just gonna sit there and cry. Pretty much. As your entire deck shuts down and you will just ball your eyes over. So bear that in mind. Lancia is gonna make you cry and uh, break hearts. Break your heart, pretty much. Hopefully, you know, Huggins in your extra deck can give you a hug and make you feel better. Right, that's all I have to say. Okay, so now I'm gonna be talking about Musketeer Runics. And in this section of this video, we're gonna be talking about the rating why it's a C plus. But before we go into that, let's give a little bit of history, a little bit of whatever. So a few years back in Yu-Gi-Oh, we had a uh, archetype that also skipped your battle phase and those were called Element Sabers. Now Element Sabers were designed much better than Runics and you know, as a community, we had hype for them thinking that they would do quite well. However, they managed to top originals, but they didn't go further. And one of the reasons for this is for the fact that they skipped their battle phase. While they had great effects, and most of them were pretty useful with their effects, the thing that actually caused them to lose games and the things that, and remember at that time we didn't have any time rules, was uh, the fact that their field spell on searching uh, element saber card skipped your battle phase. This was absolutely huge. This meant that you couldn't go for game. So what essentially happened was when you played element sabers was you could make this fantastic board but you couldn't attack to win because your battle phase would essentially be skipped. Um, and then another thing as well with all their boss monsters, the element lords that were in element sabers, they had an effect when they left the field you guessed it, your battle phase was skipped. So all this combined um, just made it so it was near impossible to just go for the win and OTK your opponent, or just win in general. Um, so yeah. And so now let's go back to where we are today with Runix. Runix coming out like a few years, quite a few years later, we can see the same problem. But Runics have another hurdle as we have another rule that's been implemented into Yu-Gi-Oh! in tournaments and this is called Time Rules. Time Rules 
have really made it even worse for an archetype that now skips your battle phase. Not only do you have to be aware of time rules, but because when time is called, the person with the higher life points is uh, the one who wins, runics have a very, very big weakness in this regard in the higher competitive scene. Because it means when time is called, you 90% of the time if you're playing runics, you're going to be losing. And this is what was happening to me, especially when I was in my locals the other day playing this deck, was I was not losing because the deck was crap. I wasn't losing because the effects were not going off. I was losing because time was called and my opponent would have higher life points than me. And the reason why I couldn't deal life points was, you guessed it, I couldn't battle. So this is something that needs to definitely be considered when playing the runic. Uh, any runic deck or any mixture of runics with any archetype that you mix it with. This lowers the potential of the deck and lowers the rating to usually an F. Whatever you mix it with can go to D, can go, puts it up to a D plus. Um, we can be generous and maybe put it to D, runics on their own to D, but that I feel is a bit too generous and considering the skip the battle phase and considering that this uh, this ability of skip the battle phase also applies, you know, in the fun setting means that it does near put the barrel on its own pure, maybe to E, possibly. Yeah, it's not looking good. But now, let's now discuss why I feel that this deck is a C, C plus in rating. First of all, with uh, Musketeers, um, you can see the explosiveness of the deck. Sure, you can play it pure, and sure, you can add in a bunch of hand traps. Um, and also, fun fact, the strongest version of Mystic Mine is with Runic, so it's that got that going for it. But if you want to play, you know, an uh, interesting version of Runics and really see them come into their own and really see them with the philosophy of if you control the field, you control the game, then Musketeers is the way to go. Not only does it allow you to plus like there is no tomorrow as you're able to essentially draw five if you do it right. And remember, we're doing this on the opponent's turn. One of the really nice things about Musketeer Runics is it allows you to play on your opponent's turn. It allows you to really interfere with your plays. And it really does solidify this fact. So in my personal opinion, Musketeer Runics is interesting and the way to go. And that's why it gets a rating of C+. Why it's not higher is because, again, time rules is a factor, this deck is affected by time and is affected by life points and in a higher competitive setting people are playing cards to win you to win in time so you will lose in this regard. Yes, you can uh, have the side as I will mention in this as I've mentioned in this video there's the side deck um, in here but overall it doesn't really help here. And that's something you need to bear in mind. You are affected by time rules. You are affected for the fact that you skip an entire phase. This does affect you. Skipping a phase in Yu-Gi-Oh! is very negligent and does affect gameplay. It, w it does come up 100% of the time. You must be aware of this. Okay. And with that, I think... I've said all I need to say about Musketeer Runics. So, final verdict, C+. It can be higher if it is mixed with some hand traps, more hand traps and some floodgates. Maybe you can get it up to B, possibly A rank. You know, is it going to go to S tier with consistency? I'm not seeing that happening. Um maybe possibly it could happen with future support but the fact that it the fact that you skip your battle phase the fact that we have all these factors and the fact that all the rules currently in Yu-Gi-Oh work against this 
mechanic of skipping the battle phase and also an added bonus is that we've been down this road before with a better deck that skipped the battle phase which was element sabers and they failed and didn't go high enough means that the highest level that this deck can go to is topping a regionals it can't go higher than that in my opinion unless we have some rule changes or unless something changes in the future i'm done we come to the end of this video so as i like to say you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.